Vlog 3, the coaching process for the module Practical Techniques in Strength and Conditioning. The following vlog shall discuss a coaching session that I delivered and shall discuss my coaching practice and critique aspects of the session that I delivered. Primarily, the communication strategies that I employ within the session I will assess my strengths and weaknesses and areas that I could improve on as a result of my experience. To put in some context into the session, I delivered the session as part of my role as a physical preparation coach, whereby I delivered to a wide range of supported athletes, some of which I program for, some of which I, I do not. In this particular session, there was two athletes, one of which a golfer, the other a cyclist, who I had never encountered before. Initially, I go over the golfer's program and discuss her training levels for the session, based on her current cycle. I find this time as a great opportunity to discuss her readiness to train, how fatigued she's feeling, which was also discussed as a result of a markedly reduced jump height when she was doing the counter movement jump, which is a regular training tool that we use for her. For her jump, I feel on this occasion I use effective verbal cues in order for her to uh, adopt a specific attentional focus. Rather than focusing on her own body movements and the movement process, I instructed her to try and hit the ceiling, therefore directing her attention to the movement outcome. Such external focus has been shown to maximise the performance outcome, therefore the athlete is not focusing on what she has to do in order to execute the movement. Uh, okay, Hannah, maybe you're ready, so just want to hit the ceiling, okay? Good. Like it. One of the first exercises that the performer executed uh, as part of a program was the hand clean. I feel my communication was reasonably effective on this occasion, however there was an over-reliance on too many internal cues. I also feel that I perhaps overcoached the movement, giving her far too much information to process. She was executing the lift by using a bit of a rocking action before the execution of the lift. I tried to instruct her to focus on vertical acceleration by cueing her to shrug up and back, therefore getting her to generate triple extension of the ankle, the knee and the hip from the power position. But she still continued to move herself whereby she was moving her shoulders forward Therefore, she wasn't in a, a mechanically optimal position to execute the lift. I feel I could have simplified things for her further by just instructing her to shrug and jump with the bar or a hybrid term of, uh, of shrump. Therefore, she's just focusing on the outcome. Well, first, well, just when you be in that position, that kind of power position. Yeah. The athlete then executed a push press. I had to firstly convince the athlete that the load was sufficient based on her program design as she was on an offload week but she felt she wasn't doing enough in terms of the load that she was lifting but I just had to kind of encourage her to kind of trust the process which she did eventually buy into. I feel on this occasion my coaching uh, cues were reasonable when I asked the athlete to dip and drive so therefore I was instructing her to generate force through the lower limbs, uh, through the torso, eventually on through the arms. I feel I could have perhaps enhanced the coaching cues a little bit uh, better um, by asking her to drive her feet away from the floor as an external cue, therefore the force is generated again through, through her legs and through her trunk. 
The second athlete I coached that evening was a track cyclist who just recently returned from the Gold Coast. I had not met the athlete before, so therefore never coached him in a weight room environment. Therefore, I wanted to speak to the athlete and ascertain what experience he had previously had in the gym. Although I had information from colleagues, I wanted to speak to him firsthand in relation to what his experience was. It turned out that he was relatively new to the programme. He had lifting experience leading up to the Commonwealth Games, but that was basically all he had. I decided, therefore, to observe the athlete execute the deadlift, not give him too much information in terms of coaching cues, as I was unsure of what he'd been coached in in the past. While observing the athlete, I felt that his execution of the skill simply didn't match the technical model. I left him doing a few reps um, and see if he would self-correct, but he did not, so therefore I felt that coaching intervention was was necessary on this occasion. Just get in that game set position from here, Joe. Come back. So all we need to do is just get out of the board. Can you really extend that spine? Big chest up and out. Can you punch your shoulder blades again? So that's a much better position to get in. I do feel on this occasion I got him into a better position while executing the lift and just concentrating on his posture. I also used an analogy of movement, therefore creating a mental picture for him as to what something may look like without giving him too much specific information. In this example, I discussed pushing your feet away from the floor and imagining he was using a leg press. Uh, although I felt this was a good analogy, uh, I just assumed that he'd done a leg press in the past. So when using analogies, I should perhaps have tried to relate it to his own sport. So for example, when he's imagining himself exploding out of the starting gates by pushing his feet against the pedals. The athlete also performed a single leg stiff leg deadlift as part of his programme. Although I felt he executed the, the exercise reasonably well, I still felt there was a lack of thoracic extension. On this occasion, I could have perhaps used different strategies to that I had employed previously when he was executing the deadlift. For example, I could have used a broom handle along the length of the spine in order to correct his poor spinal alignment. This would have uh, given him some kinesthetic or sensory feedback, which would be coupled with me cueing him again to remain in contact with the broom handle. This, I feel, would help him enhance his kinesthetic awareness in relation to his uh, postural positioning and would assist him in, in future in relation to similar exercises. Whilst coaching the athlete the exercise, I feel I gave too much technical advice and at times I, I need to be careful in not overloading the athletes with too much information. This I feel I, I, I do do and I should keep my feedback short and simple as I'm aware that too much information can lead to confusion and also poor performance outcomes as a result of that. To conclude sessions, I do feel it's important to ask the athlete how they felt and get their feedback in relation to the session. I feel it's a great opportunity to do that. It's also an opportunity to gauge how fatigued they are again in relation to their session by using simple monitoring tools like sessional RPE for example. In conclusion, I do feel that there were strengths within my session. For example, the external verbal cues that I gave some of the athletes I felt was quite effective. However, this is an area that I feel that I do still need to work on, and in particular the amount of technical information that I give athletes that I feel can be overwhelming for them. 